What is the Neural Stem Cell Institute? We are an independent, nonprofit research institute. We are set up to find new ways to combat diseases of the nervous system. Um, diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, age-related macular degeneration, and disorders like spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis. These are diseases for which currently there is no hope. And what we believe and what we're working towards is to start using stem cells from the nervous system to help combat these diseases. What are stem cells? Stem cells are amazing, actually. They are a unique type of cell. We have them in multiple places in our body. Um, they're in the skin, uh, they're in the gut. Um, what these cells do is they can self-renew, which means they can make copies of themselves. So you can start with one cell and then you get two cells, four cells, eight cells, and so on. Um, so the cells have this property of creating more of themselves. They're like a renewable resource. And at the same time, the cells can produce valuable cells in the body. And the stem cells we're interested in are the ones in the central nervous system. They can give the brain, spinal cord, and retinal cells. Now, you personally, uh through research have made some incredible discoveries dealing with uh, stem cells in the uh, central nervous system. You want to talk about that a little? So, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of luck, you know, a lot of sweat, a lot of, a lot of uh, trial and error involved. But well, we I'm, in very, awe. I'm in awe of yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, thank you for saying. We, we, we were lucky to be involved at the beginning of this field. So back in 1988-1989, uh, I began a series of experiments that showed we could isolate stem cells from the nervous system. And uh, this had never been done before. So it was very exciting. And I think that it demonstrated for the first time that the nervous system could perhaps repair itself in some way, or we could use these cells to help repair the nervous system. So that, since then, that's captivated us, and that's what we're working towards. Now, what exactly is the central nervous system? The central nervous system I'm in biology is, class today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so the central nervous system is the brain, the spinal cord, and the retina. Those three areas make up the central nervous system. So it's it's really the system by which we detect things around us, um, and also the way we interact and respond to our environment. Now, how would stem cell research? What would it do for the brain? So there there are two main ways. Um, so in brain diseases like. Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease, certain cells in the brain die. And the hope is that we can use stem cells to make new cells that can replace the ones that are lost. Um, at the same time, we know that it would be wonderful if we could find drugs to help combat those diseases. So another use of stem cells is to create a disease in a dish. You can put the cells in a petri dish and then put in different drugs and then see if some of them help those cells, preventing them from dying, and then those drugs could then be developed towards therapeutics. Now, you were talking about um, Alzheimer's disease. Is mm. that, uh, that's a growing uh, problem in our nation. Is that inevitable? or is it uh, something which is just genetic from family to family? So there, there are some cases where it is heritable and you do see it running in families, and other cases where it can pop up. In fact, in most cases, um, it can just pop up sporadically in, in families. Um, and it is a devastating illness, yeah. I understand uh, through diet, if you eat a lot of greens, that's a very smart thing to uh, avoid or postpone Alzheimer's disease? 
Is that true? That I... <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I, I wish it was so easy. Right. Um, I I don't know at this point if if that sort of nutritional approach can really help. I mean, this is a progressive degenerative disease, and um, it, it, you know, it, once diagnosed, it, it's it's really survival is is limited. So it's a devastating disease that currently there's really there's little uh, therapeutic option for these patients. Now also, you indicated that uh, stem cell research can help the uh, retina. Yes. Could you talk about that a little? Oh, yes. Um, actually, there are already some clinical trials for using stem cells to help in the retina. Um, and we also were working on this topic. We have a slightly unique approach. Okay. Um, in the retina, there is a layer of cells called the retinal pigment epithelium that dies in a disease called age-related macular degeneration. Okay. Now, that disease affects uh, about one in five people over age 70. So it's a huge disease. There are literally millions of people who suffer from it. It's the leading cause of blindness in the U.S. The hope is that we can use stem cells to make new retinal cells to replace the ones that are dying. And we have found a new cell, a stem cell that is in the adult retina that we can take out, culture, make beautiful new cells. And what we're working towards now is using those cells to replace the ones that are dying in patients with age-related macular degeneration. So basically, what you're doing at your research institute, if I understand you uh, correctly, is you're taking stem cells from people and you're cultivating them to reproduce and you're able to take the stem cells that have reproduced and able to help people in your research? Exactly. That is exactly what we're doing. So we can take nervous system stem cells, we can grow them, uh, study them, characterize them, make sure that they are real, that they're functional, uh, that they make the cells that we want. And then the hope is that we will be able to push those cells towards clinical trials. That is our aim. What sort of um, success have you had with uh human beings uh, so far, is there any that you can talk about yet? So at this stage, it's, it's early stages. We're just beginning the process of moving towards clinical trials. Um, I hope if we can come back in a couple of years, I'll be able to tell you more about that. Well, I think you indicated to me that you've um, seen some success so far, and you made a presentation over at your institute recently with uh, animals. You've had some help, some luck with the animals and seeing differences with stem cell. Could we talk about that a little? Yes, so one of the things that we've been working on also is spinal cord injury. We received funding from New York State through a wonderful spinal cord injury research program. And through that program, we were able to develop a new uh, stem cell approach to spinal cord injury. Um, and we have tested it in animal models and see beneficial effects. So uh, animals that have been spinal cord injured, we can get quite a lot of recovery, noticeable recovery using this approach. I remember when you were uh, showing us the uh, films, you were just mm -hmm. so delighted to show us the before and after with uh, yes. certain animals and how uh, healthy they had become. They also looked uh, a lot younger than the original. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether that was my imagination or not. Oh Well, you know, when animals are uh, doing better neurologically, they, they do look uh, brighter, they move better, um, so maybe that's what you were detecting. What program that you're working on right now are you most excited about? We're truly excited about this retinal stem cell that we've discovered. I, I talked already about how we think it could be valuable in the eye mm -hmm. for retinal disease, which is enormous. 
Um, but this is a unique source of adult stem cells from the nervous system. And we believe that we will be able to manipulate these cells to make other cells that might be valuable for, say, Parkinson's disease or spinal cord injury or multiple sclerosis. So that is truly what we're excited about right now. Why is it with so many exciting things happening in a positive way to help uh, human beings' health and help their quality of life, that there is some opposition in this nation to uh, stem cell research. Could you talk about that a little bit? You know, um, I think that it, it's very important to respect people's uh, religious views. Sure. And uh, we, we approach that at, at our institute. Um, at the same time, there are different opinions. And, uh, you know, we are motivated mostly by the need to help and the need to heal. Um, I think that there are some people who are opposed to stem cell research who think that it's linked to abortion, for example, which is not the case. Um, there are people who see that um, it, it might be involving in the destruction of embryos, um, which for some types of, of stem cell research does occur. But in, in those labs that are doing those experiments, the embryonic stem cells are derived largely from embryos that would be discarded. Um, they have been made in in vitro fertilization clinics and not used, and then the embryos are actually discarded because after a while they can no longer be used uh, for implantation. And so I think the, the philosophy of the people who are doing those experiments is that rather than throw away this resource, uh, let us use it. A lot of parents believe that that donation, if it helps people's lives and helps healing, that that is morally the, the way that, that, that they want to pursue um, that donation. So uh, I think it's a complex issue and we have to look at all sides, but ultimately um, looking after health and being able to repair uh, the body and, and you know, help people live more fulfilled lives, that is of paramount importance. When we were talking on the phone recently about this, I think you kind of explained to me that uh, stem cell uh, use is almost like uh, like an organ transplant where like you uh, take a, a kidney from mm -hmm. someone and you know implant it in someone else it's sort of like the same thing where you'll take a stem cell from someone and uh, give it to someone else and like a kidney transplant it, it helps them uh, helps their quality of life gets them better yes would that be correct yes yes that that is how how the process is working um, for us, for example, we imagine in the future we'll be able to take a sample of the retinal stem cell and then grow that up in the culture dish, uh, make many, many more cells of the particular type that we want, and then use that to repair um, breaks or damage in the nervous system. What about uh, bone marrow uh, research mm -hmm. in, with stem cells? How is that going? Yeah, that of course is, is in clinical use now and it's really one of the uh, sort of high points, the great examples of what stem cell research can do. Uh, when people have a bone marrow transplant, the cells that are transplanted and then graft are the stem cells. They take up residence in the patient, they begin making new blood cells. Uh, it's a tremendous boon. Um, that approach is used for blood disorders, of course, and for some cancer treatments. Um, but the cells from the bone marrow can just give uh, blood cells. Uh, they can't give brain cells. Uh, perhaps they can help in some ways, but they, they cannot repair the nervous system. That's why we're working on the nervous system stem cells. Also, um, you were talking about uh, skin grafting and uh, stem cells. You want to elaborate mm. on that a little yeah. bit? The skin is another tissue where there are stem cells. I think we all know if we cut ourselves, we'll heal over that wound. And that activity is due to stem cells in the skin, which proliferate and make new skin. And uh, that 
technique is actually used to help create skin grafts uh, for burn victims, for example.